Mergers, acquisitions, profits, and losses. Business stuff. Sure, it's important, but that's Gary and Accounting's job. You're focused on the big picture, crushing the competition. See, it's not about winning as much as it is about making sure you're the top dog, the big cheese, the king banana. Everyone else is just a guppy. In this business ocean, you're the shark. Every player begins a game with a stock of their choice from one of the four companies. None of the companies is inherently stronger or weaker than the others, but having multiple people choose the same company to invest in from the start can really change the incentive structure from the get-go. On your turn, you have the option to buy up to five shares in any of the companies for their market price as shown on the price tracker board. You can also sell as many shares as you'd like for their market price. This buy and share action can be done before and or after your main action. For your main action, you'll roll the dice. The company die will indicate which company building you'll place on the board, and the green die will indicate which quadrant to place it in. Rolling a black or gray symbol on the company die allows you to choose any color company you wish, and rolling a shark symbol on the quadrant die means you must place the building in the center shark area of the board. Placing a loan building will reward you with $1,000, and if it was the first building of that color, it establishes that company and increases the stock price to $1,000. Whenever the stock price increases, any player that owns stock in that company will receive the difference between the previous stock price and the newly established one for every stock that they own. If you place a building next to a building of the same company, it creates a chain. This is the predominant way to increase the stock price. The stock price is a reflection of the sum of all the buildings in the company's chains. Placing a building here, for example, will increase the green stock price from $5,000 to $6,000. The player who placed that building will receive a bonus equal to the stock's new price, and all owners of the stock in that company will receive $1,000 per stock. You cannot place a building next to another company's buildings unless performing a hostile takeover. A hostile takeover occurs when the chain you are creating is larger than the chain of the other company's buildings. In this example, placing a red building creates a chain of size 3, which is larger than the 2 chain for blue, so a hostile takeover occurs. The red company increases stock price and pays out bonuses as normal. Then, the smaller chain is removed from the game. The stock price of the removed chain is decreased one space for each building that was in the chain. Players that own stock in their removed chain must now pay dividends and losses equal to the amount that stock changed for each stock that they own, unless they were the player who caused that hostile takeover. This can cause huge swings of fortune as giant companies gobble up little chains scattered around the board. The game ends when either one company reaches a valuation of $15,000 per stock, runs out of buildings, or has no more available stock to be purchased. Players then calculate the value of their held stock and add it to their cash on hand, the wealthiest player is the winner. Shark was originally released in 1987, and it shows. Its heavy reliance on dice rolls means it's entirely possible to be starved out of capital to start the game. You might not roll the right combinations that allow you to place chains and be stuck placing one-off buildings on the board. This means you won't be getting the big bonuses, and you won't be able to buy into the big companies as they grow. It's not a great feeling to be squeezed out of contention by random happenstance. The dice rolls aren't entirely without merit, however. The nature of the game makes it so that you can usually see big moves coming. As a chain starts growing and gaining momentum, you may start sweating as you wait for the turn to move around the table back to you in order to divest before the pain is inflicted. The uncertainty of the dice makes for a wonderfully tense moment. Of course, things never seem to quite work out the way you expect. The random nature of company growth may see a plucky upstart company experience a growth boom and suddenly become the bully of the board. I don't want to overstate the impact of the dice. You do have some control over the game state due to the generous quadrant size that allows you to hide or attack depending on your situation, and the wild sides of the company die allow a decent amount of control. It's just that there's no getting around the fact that sometimes you're stuck with a turn where not much happens, and that's just not all that compelling. Shark is at its best when players are direct and confrontational, forcing takeovers with aggressive placements. This is not a game for the timid. Safe play leads to a lukewarm experience that satisfies no one. There's a certain joy to be had when seeing a massive company expand across the map, gobbling up all the little chains that dare to stand in the way, even when it comes at your expense. Laughs and groans fill the air if you're willing to accept Shark for what it is, a luck-based chaos machine. I just wish the experience wasn't peppered with dull turns. Is Shark the height of strategy and foresight? No but it's not trying to be. Moves aren't especially clever as much as they are assertive. It's meant to appeal to players who like to gamble and make big plays. 
I can get down with that. I just wish that the wind-up were a little snappier before the fireworks begin to fly. Placing little one-off buildings here and there to start the game doesn't really amount to much. But once the board gets tight and players begin to threaten takeovers, the tension ramps up dramatically. It's hard to fully endorse Shark, but I can't fully dismiss it either. It gave us laughs and it gave us cries. That certainly counts for something, 